Hey, Kate. Hello. Good to see you Yeah, again. I do look a lot Christmas. I look almost, because it's got dark outside, I do look a bit like <laughs> those um, cr criminal programs, you hide your identity. I'm a bit still away. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop okay. my voice. Yeah. <laughs> my voice is just cracking. Yeah. So it's we were just working out. It's been quite a while, eh? We've probably about mm. two years since the last time I saw you, but we oh, um, no, yeah, we've known each other for a long time because we were at, at uni together, right? Yeah. Yeah. God, that was yeah, a long time ago. So. Mm. Uh, I remember so, your um, your project where you were baking um, a Mass Effect. Um, oh yeah, yeah, that, the, what the Turian, what? yeah, the Turian alien head. Because it was hard. I think at uni as well, you just think, I was like, oh, where do I want to go with this? Because I always knew I wanted to do that film and behind the scenes. I always loved that. And I was like, oh, but what do you do? Do you have to know everything? Do you have to do sculpting? Do you, and I did love sculpting. Yeah. And um, I think that was why I did that. And I thought all oh, the character, but it was kind of hard to to pick up, you know, it's quite, and I thought, oh, it was an amazing I, piece. I, I looked at it. Hey, it's just design of, you know, yeah. the design of that, um, you know, the creatures and characters on that, I really liked. So I think that's why mm. I sort of went. But, yeah, it was good fun, good fun to paint in that. Yeah. And what, what did you end, was that a fiberglass thing in the end, Kate? Or? Yeah, glass. That I sort of did it. It's just, yeah, like a, bust sort of yeah. it's always hard you have to have a reason they're like oh but what would this be as a prop and I was like I don't, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, it's just a sculpture <laughs> yeah but, uh, yeah but yeah it's um, just solid fiberglass I eventually sold it years later I was trying to oh I, it. I put it up on I think it was Etsy and it did get sold so Good. <laughs> well, yeah. through that <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I, 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 I bet some Mass Effect collector will love that. It's, yeah. Because she did like the sort of war paint on it, I seem to remember. As yeah, well. I remember yeah. there was a few of the characters on that that had that. And I, yeah, I really like that design. And, mm. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was good fun. I did enjoy doing that one. And, yeah. yeah. Did you do any work experience while you were at uni, Kate? Or? Yeah. I had to do it because it was a bit hard with you. They didn't. They weren't very good at sort of getting it. So, yeah. I mean, and I, I kept trying and they said Frank and Weenie was coming up. And I, they said, wait for that. And I kept waiting. But when I rang up, they said, oh, no, we've told you, Weenie, we're not taking trainees at the moment. We're not allowed to take someone for free. And I was like, oh, you know, that was a bit of a fib. So without telling the uni, <laughs> I went and got work experience on Captain America. I oh, did it right. without telling them. And I did it for totally for free. You, I think everyone else had already been on it and done. Yeah, but that's it, right. Actually, because when I went, it was really quiet. So there weren't yeah. many people. And it was actually a really good chance for work experience because Roland and Tom Jones, not the singer, Mulder and yeah. Tom Jones, they <laughs> made sure I had <laughs> Tom Jones, I know him. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they made sure I had varied things to do. So it was actually quite lucky. So even though I did it for totally for free, only a couple of weeks, but it was like a good crash course. You know, they let me do a bit of poly carving. Was that after we'd, we'd finished then, Kate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Awesome. Done. So I cheekily called up and said. Yeah. No, good on you. Up. Yeah. And it, and it was brilliant because that, having that job was the first connection I had and that went off onto, you know, Avengers. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was really good. And it was Tom Jones in the Moldrum who got me back on um, I think it was Guardians of the Galaxy no Thor that was it actually Thor no, too yeah that. nice Thor I got on as part of the general workshop and I helped in the mould room a bit and then it was Guardians that I was brought back to join the mould room team and yeah so that was where I sort of started off really was more mould room slash workshop like yeah nice yeah that's good eh yeah they were good good team to, you know Tom so it seemed to yeah. Yeah, I, I did enjoy that. You know, the team in the mould room. Uh, oh, mm. Tony Noel. <laughs> it was, yeah, um, right. Yeah. It was good. It was it was nice because you're like your own little team in there, so you yeah. sort of work, you know, get it done, and you have your own side. So yeah, it's, yeah, and I think it's it's good to do. You know, I think everyone should do mould room or at least try it because I think it's yeah. good to know where you know how it all works. I think it's just good to have a 
and the materials used and yeah totally so would, would were you making molds or mainly you know like bits of casting mostly to start off with them out, mostly churning them out like casting yeah. them out like um there was a few times i helped with the molds some of the big ones we all have to work together on and, yeah but um yeah it was really good and it was the mold rooms good because never at uni you never really get to use the big machines like the table saw i think for some reason our year we had a bit of a boycott and it didn't well, well no one was allowed for some reason yeah unfortunately there's a bit, there's a bit of an accident something. and they got scared yeah yeah so never got to use it so it was quite good i remember um i think tom jones and peter lee sort of got me used to using the table saw so it was quite good i got more confident on the machines and yeah things like that so yeah it was um yeah, that's funny Pete Lee keeps coming up on like, almost everyone's uh, podcast because he works on so many different films. You know, so I, I had him on um, on episode three, and yeah, it's good to uh, yeah, have so him on early because he keeps his name keeps popping up. It's good. <laughs> oh, so popular that Pete yeah. Lee. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so so I guess. Um, how did you find that with the chemicals? Were you all right with all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I didn't mind. I actually quite enjoyed because I, I do like having something to, to get on. Like, oh, you, this is your, you know, get on with that, get it done. And I I, I often got the mass production stuff because I do like a system and I'm like, yeah. And yeah. I, yeah, I like that. And it was satisfying. And doing the weapons, we got to do, we had a bit of overflow because I weren't in the armory for Guardians, but um uh, but we got to do help them out, and that was quite fun doing that, doing the soft stunt weapons, and mm. yeah, it's good fun, very satisfying, especially like you demold a, a knife, and it's like this, this is no, it's a present coming out of the mold, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's oh, good, and um, yeah, so so um, how long you know, cause I, I've, I've known you later on getting into paint, when when do you? transition from moulding to yeah. well yeah because i mean since because yeah tom uh in the mould room like knew i did say because i worked them on skyfall as well so it was a couple of jobs i did with them but i had always said it's like oh i'd love paint is something i've always been interested in i i, I think at uni i didn't know if at, at the time i didn't know it was a department i always assumed mm-hmm. oh you have to do steps I thought that was how it worked, you know, I thought, oh yeah, you have to do that start to finish, and and yeah. when I found out, I was like, oh wow, no, there is a whole department, and there's, you know, all different techniques, and I loved seeing it all sort of come to life, and I like mm. that idea, I mean, this thing that's fake, and you make it look like a real thing, and um, yeah, on Guardians, he let me help um, Jess Moore um, upstairs with some of the painting, and I got to help with her and Philippa on books on four. Oh yeah, that's four too actually. That was so a load of books. There was like this whole library, oh. <laughs> the tragic library scene that was barely in it, and it was like beautifully made, like loads of these bookcases, and we did hundreds of these books, and we're like, oh, beautiful library. And then in the end, it was like fog effect over the whole set, and there's like literally a blurred bit of the bookcase in the background, and then it was um. <laughs> Oh, what's this that? It just sort of like four or something, just pointing to a book, and I was just like, oh, that's really sad. Yeah. <laughs> like case, you know, we did hundreds of these books, so that was good, and you know, they helped sort of say, yeah, well, if you're interested in going into that, go for it. And while we had a quiet time in yeah. certain bits of my life, they let me do that. So I really appreciated that, you know, that they let me jump mm. into part. Sweet. And um, yeah, then it was from. Uh, Guardians that luckily I got sort of headhunted on it was just Exodus remember all Exodus oh yeah, yeah. I do remember so that. yeah I, um Martin Gaskell called up and said oh you yeah he goes oh yeah I know what you do you do a bit of painting as well don't you and he goes oh we probably need another painter and it was just by luck and I got was when I got to meet Laura Skinner yeah and, uh, in fact I did get ready still got you made us the little oh. Oh wow! <laughs> Look at that. Uh, I've seen that in ages. Joke, That's funny. Until my current job now, Exodus remained my number one favourite job of all time for all those years. I absolutely really loved that job. I think it's it the was the first time. It was just a lovely. I don't know because it was sun that sunny and we had the tents outside that we worked in and yeah, yeah. and it was just a really nice team and you know it's good fun. And, 
It was a smaller crew, wasn't it? Because we were just in yes. the vehicle. Well, we, the vehicles department, which was basically just chariots, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it was nice. And it was, yeah, it was just so bad. And it was the first time, like I said, I got properly in the paint department. And, yeah. and Laura was great. You know, she was her and um, uh, Holly Jenkins. But, um, yeah, that, they were, you know, it was just great team to work for. And, you know, yeah, I learned I was saying, no, I was just saying, I learned a lot of her as well, materials mm. that they used and how they do it. And, I, and that was like a good step instead of, oh, right, okay, that's interesting. I, you know, looked up, kept jotted down the names of things that they were using, paints and, mm-hmm. and yeah. And it was, yeah, really yeah it was nice because it was um, in the middle of summer and like you said, in Pinewoods, they've got all the gardens and we were in the workshop very yes. close to the gardens as well, weren't we? So, yeah. yeah. It was really nice, and even though our workshop was basically a little tense, but it was just something nice about it. It was just like outside, yeah. you know, working away. And it would have been very different if it would have been middle of winter, but still, <laughs> yeah. yeah it was one day cold, because we had a space heater on, and mm. we were like, didn't realise we were gassing ourselves out of the tent. We had the space yeah. heater on. <laughs> we were just like, <laughs> just like, oh, it's a bit fumy in here. But apart from that, yeah, it's very good, very good weather, and... Yeah. Yeah, good. Job, yeah. So. I think I was doing bits of leather work and stuff on that for the most part. Yeah, yeah. 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 All the quiver boxes and mm, you know, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very blingy and gold as well. It's of gold. Yeah, it was good to see because we were quite close to where they started filming as well, um, and they yes. did all the um, yeah, yeah that big coming out of the. Uh, the temple, you know, and the big parade of all the all the yeah, it's all the horses. And I feel really bad. We laughed at this one horse that we said looked like a like Steve Buscemi, and it was <laughs> clearly this like ugly horse that they just tried to put in the background. And it was like this pissy yellow. And it was we were just like oh, looking at it, and the rider looked so ashamed of this poor Steve Buscemi horse. And then we felt a bit bad for laughing at it. We're like, oh, bless it. <laughs> all these other like fabulous. Frisia horses, is it Frisia? Is that what they're called? They're so proud, and there's this really withered looking thing. We were just <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was it was really good, really nice stuff to do on that with it being Egyptian. Mm. And yeah, really, really good. So yeah, very yeah. blingy. What came after Exodus for you then? Um, I think, gosh, was it Fantastic Beasts or no? I'm, but, I'm trying to think what I did after that as well. Yeah, I oh. yeah, it must have been. Um, oh, maybe it was Beauty and the Beast. No, Tarzan. Tarzan. I think. Possibly. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that it's makes sense. Tarzan. Yeah, yeah so uh, yeah, I was in old team. Well, I started in the mould room and then I moved to paint in yeah. the adult. That was when okay. um, um, episode seven was just kicking off, but Prop Shop had it, eh? So, like, we, yeah, I ended up going oh, to Avengers and, yeah, a bunch mm-hmm. of people went on to Tarzan, yeah, yeah. That was it. Yes, that was it. I was on Avengers and then Tarzan. Nice. Yeah. So that yeah. was it, yeah. And then, um, yeah, that was that was good fun. So, like I said, started off in the Muldrum as prior that they knew I was wanting to get into paint, but they didn't have everything ready to go. And then it was like, the Anavine madness. It was just, I don't you remember the old sausage bags? It was like, yeah. Bags. <laughs> and then uh, I'd be bagging them and then painting them yeah, up. Yeah, so that, yeah. that was, a, 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 sorry, explain that process. So that was basically rope inside of a plastic bag with expanding foam. Yes, yeah, so we had like, we had to make the sausage bags because they had to taper from fat to thin. So yeah. we had to seal up the sausage bag and then, um, so like, then like you say, yeah, we had rope through it, so that was suspended. I think we had to have it on tension. Some of them probably didn't have rope, but I think a lot did. And then, yeah, then we had the the gun that fired off the two-part foam and then put it in. And it was quite funny because sometimes you, we found if you put intentional holes in the sausage bag, it made bits obviously burst out, but it actually looked quite good because it kind of looked like a knot line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was quite interesting way of it. Yeah, it was effective. Yeah, it yeah. was a lot of work, thousands of them. And, uh, yeah. Good. It was, um, yeah, 
it's quite nice. I, I enjoyed that job. Good fun production line of it was quite yeah, and it was very satisfying sets on that. It was quite fun walking in sort of the jungle on that. And, mm. and you, you were you guys involved in dressing the set quite a bit, or were you men in the workshop? And look, I didn't as much. There was a few times I went on to do touch ups, just paint the paint or wear the, the leaves. Some of the leaves they wanted to look like it had, you know, been cut away, and then you brown it up a bit and uh, dirty it down. And so I was doing a bit of that, and then I know some of the others in the team got to do the dressing it up high on mm. the scissor lift and things like yeah. that and, nice. yeah yeah good. Good. The, the, i remember um people talking about the molds for the uh the big gunner leaves as well that sounded crazy uh, i helped make some of them at the start like yeah and that. and that was a nightmare because they were they were just massive from the start so it was hard to even reach the middle when you're glassing it and yeah it was done that um oh, what's it called like Carbon, not carbon fiber, it was that woven, it was, tepper, it was, it was a nightmare because when you put the resin on, it was so thick because it just had to be so strong, this stuff. The resin, it almost was like the resin just didn't, so, so you're like almost putting this like blanket on the thing and you're like, oh, it, yeah. was, it was hard work and it was layers and layers of that, and you know, so different grades of the, the fiberglass matting and then go into that really thick woven stuff and yeah, yeah. it was quite and then, was yeah, that just, they had to, keep to keep it nice and thin then why you had to use the thick stuff oh well that was the thing because it had to be because it was if you remember it was put under pressure it was like yeah oh thunder. right so it had to be super super strong so it had so many layers yeah. eventually and um, um it had to be dead level flat so when the two met it was a proper sandwich squash yeah and then oh yeah that was they were an intense yeah, surface. Talk about like um at least like probably over six foot by like six yeah. foot every day and that I think names the molds i can't yeah. remember some of them even bigger than that i believe but yeah yeah, yeah. they were they were that but yeah they were enormous yeah they, i remember there was one that was like halfway up the wall you know i remember it laying up against it and i was just like oh my god it's massive yeah amazing it's like, really very different that one for a prop making job, eh? It's not often that sort of thing comes up, but no, yeah, I suppose it was unusual because they wanted such, I don't know, fantasy exaggerated jungle. though because you'd think, oh, couldn't you just buy a giant gunner release? But I suppose it's keeping them alive and keeping yeah. it looking, you know, the continuity and the quantity maybe as well, and you know, yeah, like, and they, yeah. they were massive. I don't know if you can get them that big. I'm sure you can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but. Like, yeah, it was, yeah, that was, yeah, it was a good job, that, yeah. Was, cool. Nice. Um, yeah, so you you quickly mentioned Avengers. What, what sort of stuff did you do on that as well? I was Muldrum again on that. Yeah. It was quite brief, Avengers, because I, I, I remember it was, they the team was smaller than Guardians, I remember, so I only had it yeah. for a short time, but it was quite good because then, um, I did manage to jump on Tarzan, I think, at the right point. I think it was that way, and I can't remember. Mm. That was how it nice. And, yeah. Did um, it must have been like um, the Fantastic Beast was to come on? Pretty was that the next one after Tarzan? For you? Or? Yeah. Oh no, Beauty and the Beast. Was Beauty and the Tarzan. Beast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, uh, and uh, yeah, it was, that was yeah, it was interesting. It was the probably most stressful job I've worked on, like in the sense of time and thing, but did have really lovely props on that you know it was all you know so french we, and fancy and yeah nice Were and that was painting? yeah I was in paint, yeah that i was in paint for that did it sometimes help in the workshop it, it was a bit slow in there and they had some you know i think i helped get codsworth looking all smooth and yeah. sounded up and, yeah and things like that so but yeah i was in paint and there, yeah there was really lovely things to do on that you know um, yeah yeah so yeah lots of sort of like um is it baroque or um you know oh yeah i think it's baroque i remember Rococo the and that kind of sort um, of do you remember the joke on if you see you know the cartoon and he's like if it's not baroque don't fix it so oh, i remember nice. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's worse. But yeah. yeah so I probably i don't know but it was just yeah so very decorative frilly yeah amazing yeah. sort of release whatever they're called and yeah yeah, and um, fake food, that was a thing I got to do. I was sort of left in charge of that painting, rather. I mean, Muldrum did 
they had the, had the job of a lot of the real food they had to mould yeah. them. We made some of the fruit that went inside this amazing jelly. I remember yeah. they did it and they did it in like a clear cast, so it was crystal clear, so all the fruit we painted and all that was inside presume, that. Yeah, I presume that's for their bee uh, guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so much food, it was food galore. And it looked, some of it looked hideous because I didn't know they displayed their food. There was this like meat cake and it had all these fake ham slices that had to do. Mm. There was like loads just done in like a, um, some Europe, you know, like a PT flex kind of, I think there was a lot of PT flex going on. It was a bit, yeah, and loads of these hands and they were just made into this meat cake with like, prawns laid around and it was just like oh it's hideous yeah <laughs> it's so scary. i was just like oh don't know how i feel about that and then there was the big Taj Mahal cake and but yeah that was good fun That's i enjoyed cool. doing this because i was more or less left to so like i said it was a very stressful job on that and i think there's so many other things going on they just sort of went oh you know you can food and it was great. I was, I loved it. I thought, oh great, oh, cool, left to do the food. And it was really fun, you know. Sort of, you know, when you you're allowed to do your own method on something and think, oh right, I play around, did it, and come up. And it was quite good. That was a very good, sort of confidence building moment to be left to do something without somebody else's method being like, oh, you did this, this, this. So yeah, that was that was really good. Awesome. Mm. Yeah, that would, yeah, especially, yeah, food's such a strange one, eh, in, in film. Yeah, like, um, it's, so, it's so satisfying. There's, whenever I've done, like, yeah, fake food or fake fish or whatever, it's something really satisfying. I don't know why. It's just weird. Mm. I think like, you try, want it to look real. You want it to look yeah. real. Yeah. It's just, yeah. I think that's why I've always liked paint, because it is like the icing on the cake. Yeah, know. nice. We, yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah, like there was, yeah, it's like finishes it off, makes that prop look like a real thing, you know. It's like when the, these fruit were all being cast out and that, um, you know, they're just like sometimes they're just fast cast, and sometimes yeah. the bowls are put colours in certain ones to get it as close, and that really does help along. And then sometimes it's just like, oh, just fast cast colour, yeah, right, you know. So, yeah, it was, yeah, it was good, and I liked that, it was kind of quick thinking and it was quite good then it stopped you being too precious about it you know it had to be quick 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 there weren't really time so yeah yeah it's good yeah yeah and then um, yeah and yeah, it was yeah. fantastic so after that yeah i think i was more workshop on that fantastic beasts and mm. some pieces some roller decks as i think i've been painted and, yeah i remember that was fun so they were like oh do you want to paint the roller decks because there was some bloke in another department he was like i guess he was the props man painter he was meant to do them for some reason didn't and there was mm. just an extra job like oh you liked but you do want to do this so yeah i got to do these roller decks and paint them up to look like that baker like you know oh uh, yeah yeah so that was good that was good fun so what is a roller deck i'm sorry I'm... oh they're those I suppose yeah old oldy woldy little calendar you know it's like a you put your diary in it, and you go, oh, okay. yes, I can pencil yeah, you. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you sort of... Nice. Um, yeah. Mm, cool. So, yeah, I mean, again, that did have, you know, really fun things like that. Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts and such fun props to do, you know. And you yeah. Know, the so, sorry, that's Fantastic Beasts and Rolodexes, was it? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, so that, that would have been the, like, the big... 20, Style, yeah, it? right. It's, it's really nice. Is that like the Ministry of Magic sort of area? Yes, I think yeah. it was. That had that, um, yeah, the massive isn't it, office with all the desks. It was like hundreds of desks. And, yeah. And so, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Hey? Yeah, that was cool. That yeah. Made. The um, Yaku- Yakuza? No, that's the that's not the Japanese, Japanese mafia. Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounded like that, didn't it? What yeah, was it called? Yeah, it, it was a while since I've seen it, so. I don't know. I know what you mean, Some yeah, yeah. But not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's like, oh, this took a new twist on the uh, Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, I can't remember now, but, yeah, they had a few, like, big 
grand balls and yeah, was, that was yeah, good stuff on that. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Um, were you on that for a while, Kate, or it was I that think it? I was. I can't remember now. It was. Um, I think I had quite a good run. Like I said, I can't remember much of things. I was doing quite a lot of. There's a lot of sandy. There was a lot of mass production. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was good. It was nice. It was always exciting to see. That there was really, you know, interesting things on that because I, I think even though Guardians had a nice time and we did these, um, I think the fun bit on Guardians when we all got to do that. Um, that lab, you know, the bit that was like the Easter egg at the end. And I did the, I think Danny sculpted them, but I cast out and painted those slugs because. Um, yes, yeah, so that was in the collectors' lab, wasn't collectors. it? Collectors. Didn't everyone get to do like a little project? And that was good fun. So the slugs were like meant to be a nod to the director because they did slither or something. Okay. But in general, yeah, so that was quite fun. It was like, oh, this is cool. So you get that, but a lot of the thing with sci fi stuff, it's a lot of crap panels and straight edge and where yeah. things like fantastic beasts and it's, it's nice i like that where things can look a bit more oldy woldy or you know yeah a bit more decorative yeah yeah, yeah decorative or organic or yeah mm. so, yeah Wicked. It's, it's, yeah nice um yeah what was next after that um gosh i Oh gosh, yeah, I've gone sort of blank. There was a few I things I don't know about that team. Yeah, just yeah. Sort of slightly related to that one, we think. Um, I remember you started making, um, you know, not for the film, just for as personal projects. You started turning up oh. wands on a little lathe that you bought. Yes, yeah, because I, I thought it was always interesting because I used to, in between times, do bits for like a little Etsy shop. And I was like, well, what can I make that's. Because the problem is, it, you'd love to make prop really properly like we do at work and yeah the problem with that is if you do something to put all you know all the resources you would in normally it comes too costly and people yeah don't want to pay that so i was like well what can i make in the ones i thought oh well, that's a great idea you can just turn them out on the lathe so yeah. i bought a little mini lathe so it was a bit annoying because it was so small i had to do the ones in two parts actually the handle and then the stem so oh, yeah. off the I couldn't just but like, often they're quite different anyway, you know, like they're... Yeah, so it did work, it did help in some way. So yeah, it was it was quite good. And it was good fun. They're, you know, quite quick to do and then do a mm. nice stay. And that was it, yeah, it was just quite fun. And then, you know, it's kind of you could get away with selling that next so you wouldn't have Harry Potter come after me because I'd just be like, Oh, it's inspired by and it's not like yeah. I try to copy yeah, you weren't design. making replicas, you were just making, you know, your own design, your own thing. Yeah, own yeah. design, and then it's almost like we could be like, oh, this was my wand that the wizarding library Yeah, exactly. Chose. That's so, cool. And yeah, they did, they did quite quite well, really. They were, you know, and they were quick to make, really. And yeah, yeah, it was, it was good fun, so. Yeah. Do you still make them, Kate, or is that? Not really. It was the mess in the house. It right, was, yeah. It's, it's horrible. That's the thing. You sort of think, oh, ideally, you just want a workshop. You can just shut the door on it. Yeah. That's the thing. A lot of things, when I start doing it at home, I'm just like, oh, the mess. It's just, yeah. oh, the dust everywhere. It's the thing. You sort of, it's the ironic thing. When you're at work, and you've got all the tools and everything there. You're sometimes just so tired. And think, oh, I haven't got time to do that. And then when you're off work, and like, yeah, I want to make yeah. things. And you haven't got any of the materials or the tools. And, and you yeah. think, oh, I can just do it having that right now and when you try and buy all these things in on your own especially if you're going to mold things and cast things I mean silicon costs a bomb I know and it goes yeah. it gets beyond the price point where people are willing to pay it you know exactly. to buy that's anything thing. which is quite sad eh? yeah so it's quite hard to make things for everyday people you know like collectors you know some certain collectors will appreciate yeah. that and, and will pay it but it's very hard to it's find those people. Yeah, yeah, when you're on Etsy, there are people like you get your laughers and they're just like, oh, I'd like this actually yeah. a tenner. And you're like, oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'll give you this plastic yeah. one. Yeah. So. And you can understand why people think but that. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. Mass they have to do things. Oh, I'm sorry. That's it, isn't it? it yeah, yeah, like you say, it's mass production, isn't it? It's just, you know, you can get it churned out, churned out. You don't realise, you know, how cheap it makes it, but when you have it done properly, the time and all the materials yeah. that actually go into it, you know, it's yeah. 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 
yeah, yeah it's, it can be quite tricky to yeah turn turn that into you know your own side gigs into you know viable businesses but yeah, yeah. that's good that's at least the, the main thing is if, if you have fun doing the thing yeah, then yeah. that's kind of and I wanted to practice a bit more on the lathe because I was thought oh it's always handy to sort of say oh yeah I'm a bit more confident on the, the lathe because like I said I always sometimes especially with that crew I was a bit more of a floaty in between I sometimes was in paint sometimes I was in the workshop yeah. and, and it was hard I did feel like oh I didn't know where I was there I was sort of stagnating and yeah. I was like oh I don't know you know I, I was like I knew I really wanted to do paint but it was always it was quite hard because paint's such a small department and sometimes yeah. it's hard if they people they're like oh we don't really need another painter and I wanted to stay loyal to the team and I kept going back and I said like, oh well if there's nothing in paint I'll do more workshop but I weren't progressing in the workshop I was you know it was like production mm, line yeah. so that was yeah after that that was when I decided oh I do need to to have a change I was like I need to I'm stuck with this with this team I love the team you know yeah you know, we had a good laugh and, but I needed to have a, a change to sort of yeah progress I just felt I'd stagnate and I weren't getting to where I, I wanted to sort of yeah get, I so. think that's that happens to a lot of people and um, you mm -hmm. can end up in a pigeonhole that doesn't quite fit you um, yes then that's sometimes it. it's hard to wriggle out of that and, and the best way is to just you know get in with a different group of people who see yeah. you with fresh eyes and then you know you, you can, thing, and it's you always can, awkward the best of times asking for maybe a pay you know you go oh can I go up it's always so awkward and it's you know and I think going a, a fresh start somewhere else you can sort of say this is what I can do this is my right blah 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 and, yeah um, yeah and it was it was great and it was that interesting turn I, I sort of I, I was it was at a time it was a bit quiet for work so I did the usual where you ring around everywhere and get portfolio interviews anywhere and out of just whatever I thought oh I'll apply for a few prosthetics places so there was millennium effects which normally is very prosthetics they do all the doctor who stuff and and i thought oh they're not going to hire me because i know prosthetics is usually very specific and they'll only hire people you know whatever so i thought oh well i'll, I'll go in because this was after justice league actually so i actually did a bit of the it was costume effects on that cool and uh did some of the back cows and uh, blah 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 so that kind of helped I think having was the back so, cows own latex and yeah so like sorry that. was that in the mold room then with the back cows or no what? I was or painting well paint, painting mostly mm. yeah so and we were cleaning up all the costume and so yeah I got to paint the back cows they sort of come out because it, it was foam latex I mean it's just it's absorbent and it had to look like this sheen and they wanted it to yeah. match the urethane version yeah but I think um, the actor, the urethane one was just so claustrophobic. I mean, very tight, very so, so they had a foam latex version as well. So it was quite interesting. So actually having Justice League and having these panels and and I went to Millennium Effects and they said, oh, well actually, you know, we've got a job in that actually could be useful. You've done costume effects. We've got these. It was for a Doctor Who episode. But yeah. yeah. Oh God, Doctor Who fans will probably just be like, I'm probably going to say this wrong, but it's like Frost soldiers frost the warriors unfortunately oh, gonna, i'm not too expert so i wouldn't be like, correct oh, yeah. you know, probably <laughs> but anyway whatever they were and we did these full suits and um and it was done with oh impiriflex that was another so i'd said oh yes i've used impiriflex so it was quite handy i got this job and it was a lot of airbrushing it i was like oh airbrushing impiriflex cool it's like a flexible impiriflex is like this flexible normally a primer so when you put it on a suit it's very you know has a lot of give and whatever you put on top usually bends with it so yes yeah, so it was quite interesting having that knowledge from that and I did that mm. job Lenium. then I finished that and then I there was an I had another interview at another prosthetics company and again I thought god I'm probably pushing my luck time with another prosthetics place because I don't do prosthetics yeah. and it was just chance that was a um km effects christian mallets uh, sorry say that again what, what were they um um uh, km effects K um christian K km effects so oh, christian i've not actually heard that one yeah they um i think he did bits they did bits for the harry potter films and cool. they worked um alongside with pierre on things i think as well and 
So I went there and said, oh, that's lucky, actually. He goes, we've got this job in that's probably a bit more proppy. And it was for Electric Dreams. And it was this um, robot that was meant to look like, well, it was weird because he looked like he was made of wood. But the criteria was, it's like, no, this is in a time when wood doesn't exist and it's novel. So we want it to look like vinyl on wood. So Christian already had this plan he was hoping would work where they were going to do vinyl dipping. And he said, as a backup, he goes, can you wood grain? And I said, I can. So I was hired and they were on like harder pieces and some of it was PT flex. And they don't usually do a lot with PT flex in prosthetics, you know, and mm. So it's all that. And um, yeah, it was lucky that the vinyl dipping did work, but there was patches. So I had to patch that in and seal and tint the whole thing. And and yeah, it was it was just lucky I got in with them. And, yeah. you know, they were def- it was just such a lovely team. There. I absolutely loved working for them. And, was that uh, a smaller group of people then, Kate? On this? Yeah, that was because it's um yeah, its own sort of company. Um, mm-hmm itself so they had their like regular team that mostly were based there yeah and they do get their regulars that sort of come back in and out and um yeah it was just really lucky because after that i did pokemon with them so the creature things um, oh, wicked. um annoyingly still can't show photos of it because it's not out yet but um artemis foul did um bits for that um, yeah that's did- been a long time coming that one yeah did this and it was quite lucky because they called me back and they said um, well, we don't usually do a lot with fiberglass, so we had bad this massive troll. It was like, you know, two levels of stories high or whatever. And we were like, oh, that, you know, would you be able to paint that? And obviously, they have their painters, so they're like skin experts, you know, they can just go, mm. but it was, it was handy. So I went to sort of help with the team to sort of get it so and how to do it on a large scale because, again, he just took on, you know, this large scale than they normally do. So it was yeah. very lucky I got in with them and done some really yeah nice jobs with them and yeah it was good and uh, they even let me when I was on Artemis Fowl with them I was helping a bit in the Muldrum and that's a totally different Muldrum ball game. I was a bit yeah, like Yeah oh, imagine you Muldrum but it was totally different. Totally different. It was just so prosthetics are so much more fragile and if one mistake, you know, that's it, you've you've ruined it. Yeah. And um I mean, it's it's quite nerve wracking and um but yeah I, they they let me um help paint some of the prosthetics pieces before they're applied because I did say I was like oh I'd love to have a have a go I mean I don't yeah. know how to do this but it was very good learning I was you know made mis- bit mistakes or whatever but yeah it was really appreciated and letting me learn you know practice doing that's that. the advantage of a, sometimes working in a smaller team eh that you um yeah you can have a bit more of a one-on-one you know like learning time with yeah. people you know and because they often need an extra pair of hands so it's worth yeah. their time to train someone else up even if they've yeah. never done it before I mean, it's difficult i said to them i was like oh if we get this next bit done i said oh would i be able to have a go having it have a help because i'd love to know how to do i mean i knew how to do silicon painting but it's, it's quite different you have to get it to a certain point um with a face piece and then the rest is done on them and it's very careful you have to be around the eyes and mm. and um it's quite good between christian mallets and um millennium i went back and forth for a while and it was a shame because i do love props and i was missing props but i it was interesting i got to do at, back at millennium there was an alien head they were like can you paint chrome latex and i was like yes and i had but not to this extreme so there was this one alien head which was for Babel that was the first one I did for them it was a year later they remembered me so they called me up so this was after doing the uh, Doctor Who thing yeah. Like, oh yeah we just, just remembered you know I haven't seen you in a year do you yeah. know how to do home later and I half this winged it so I went yes yes that will be fine and I, so I thought to myself like, okay I'll think of it as because I knew how you paint on foam latex with the prosade and but it's like a glue and it's yeah. like it's horrible so if you're painting with a glue it's like it's just sticky in seconds and I thought well okay if I think of it as like another painting medium so I did like how I paint a prop <laughs> but on this foam latex not so they're probably looking at me like because you get a bit nervous you go to prosthetics it's a different world and I was like oh, they're probably going to look at me like 
doing holding it like that I was yeah. like doing washes and it's quite nerve-wracking because especially with foam latex around the eyes you can't have any rolling or anything like that you've ruined it because they've got to blend that away so it's yeah. quite scary I was like doing my method that I knew how to achieve that but on a thing and it worked I yeah done that and then they called me back to do another alien which was for Good. the tap tea yeah Nice. And that was really fun. I really liked the design of that alien. I think sometimes you've got to learn to trust yourself, eh? You, you know, yeah. you, you might go, you know, you could you could easily have turned that job down and go, I'm, I'm not confident enough yeah. to do it. Or, you know, I'm, but you yeah. were confident enough to do it. You just had to trust that you would be able to figure yeah. it out. Yeah, I thought, yeah. I kind of get how this thing works, this material works. I follow the the steps a lot and I, yeah and it, it it did work and good. and uh, yeah it was it was good and yeah the other alien um, had a uh, Ross Mullen is his name he was the guy on um, Game of Thrones that was like the the Frost Soldier oh yeah, Frost yeah. King, I'm doing it again I'm calling things wrong and the fans are like what on earth you call yourself a Game of Thrones fan yeah <laughs> but, um, but it's so funny meeting him in real life because he plays that you know this horrible caption he's just such this jolly he's just what lovely and he played the alien and he brought such character to it because it was an animatronic face the was alien. he the ginger fella in game of thrones no he <laughs> was um you wouldn't recognize him because he's full makeup he's one of those um oh right the, okay so he's the actual like white, Darth like the, looking character yes he was the, the white walker king yeah. or something he died i mean, I mean nothing spoiler alerts yeah. whatever so his character at one point um but yeah and it was just so funny you see him, you think god you wouldn't believe he's that set but he was so good and he's like doing this dance in it very strange effort but it was a really yeah. fun job so yeah and millennium as well i got to do um for uh wurzel gummage there's these this marrow man head um god i've forgotten his name uh but yeah he was like so I got called, it was really fun. So it's like doing like a big giant marrow as a, a cow, and that was foam latex. So I had to wow. make it look like. But it, they wanted it a bit more vibrant than a real marrow. So I thought it looked a bit like a watermelon more yeah. than a marrow, but it was the colour they wanted. <laughs> but, so yeah, I had some really fun projects between you know Millennium and uh, Christian Malix, and it was quite good discipline because if you mess up on a prosthetic, you can't go back. You've ruined it. Yeah, <laughs> and it has to be done completely again. Where at least with a prop, even if you have to sand it back or yeah, you know, right, and go back on it. So it was a very good learning thing and discipline, and good to know what materials to use. And I think we'll drop that down. And if something bizarre yeah. comes up, props, which it can do, get yeah. something random, and they're like, oh, we want this to be all bendy or whatever. You think, oh, okay. So yeah, so yeah. Been, good and got me more confidence and then eventually I managed to get back into props world mm -hmm. I did miss it I think I like the fact with props it's more varied in a sense like I like that you have to make something look like wood you'll make it look like stone or um I quite like that and more you know I mean I like prosthetics but it is a lot more with the airbrush and oh airbrushes I get angry at them they block up and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> Hence why I think they thought I looked like a mad woman when I was putting things on like a watch. They were probably like, mm. so it's just a bit like, mm. I was like, but it works, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> they are very much more, it's more. Yeah. So yeah, it's nice getting back into props. And then I worked for Craig Narimore at his, um, he got a workshop in Uxbridge. And um, yeah, that was, that was good fun. We did some fake fish for a project. And um, they did um, a lot of other things. There was these statues, but annoyingly, can't show the pictures because that's not out. Yeah, and that's okay. We'll, yeah. and, but did some really good, fun projects there. And there was literally three of us in this workshop left to sort of look after the workshop and get these projects done. And it was, it was really good. It was really nice sort of having our time management, get, you know, using my processes and get all these things done. And, and, it, was, and it was good. And then from that, um, I got on to The Witcher and nice. got to sort of, sort of head, head dog, so yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. And I remember um, 
you know, plenty of times where we hang out, you, you, you tell us how good the, the Witcher game was. You were a big yeah, fan of that for a long time. Fan. So it's a really cool thing to be working on something. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, first time I worked on something, I was like, super fan of and that had taken because for years exodus was my like most favorite job i worked on yeah and which yeah. is now just taken the, the top no oh, nice because getting to like sort of do my own methods for things and you know that's such a lovely you know that sort of old yeah. medieval oldy woldy and just really cool stuff to do and you yeah. know lots of organic things and yeah it's it's really good fun and a lot of, it's very fast paced there's a lot of things coming in a lot of big things yeah but um really good and got like a couple of us in the in the paint team and it's like yeah so yeah oh awesome okay yeah i'm really yeah. really happy for you eh? it's yeah, such it's, a progression it's, eh? like you've had such a, a you know a, quite a lot of titles here eh? that you kind of yeah yeah and it was interesting i just yeah that was the thing i always wanted to get into paint it's just hard sticking with it and then finally mm. get that and it's like oh yeah we can trust you to do that and then yeah you know so yeah it's really good and i i'm really loving that job i'm hoping we all go back to work soon once all this yeah coming down but yeah it's been yeah really really enjoying that job it's been yeah definitely awesome. the best job awesome. yeah. that's great and eh? um, yeah. So, I, I mean, you, other than the ones, would, have you done any other little personal projects in between, or have you been mostly focusing on work? Not, yeah, not too many, because like I said, it's the mess. I mean, while I've had all this yeah. time off, I'm just doing sewing. Oh, no, <laughs> just my cool. little skirt, so I can be like, oh, fabulous, summer, yeah. <laughs> even though there's nowhere to go at the moment. So I just have, like, a new skirt to go to Sainsbury's in or something. I'd be like, yeah. yes. <laughs> But that's about it, and I'm not very good at sewing, really. It's hence why I just sewing like skirts. Yeah, but it's just an, another string to your bow, okay, that you're, you know, like, you've already got so many different... It's always handy with fabrics. always get jealous of, like, when you see people that work in sort of all fabric, and you think, oh, they could just make an outfit if they feel like it. They could just be like, oh, my mates. Yeah. I think, oh, that's handy. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, sadly, it has, hasn't gone that extreme yet. I mean, at least skirt doesn't need, like, legs or anything, so it's been... Yeah. I see it. No, it's, it's good fun though. So yeah, yeah. Good. yeah. Apart from that, I haven't really been doing my uh, too many projects. Yeah. Just sitting up for well, furniture things, you know, tarting up a bit of, but you yeah. know, nothing too. But, yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, it's, it's crazy. It's so good to hear. Like, it's funny how you know that first project, the the Mass Effect one. It was yes. almost a prosthetic. It was almost a painting job. It yes. was, you know, what I mean, it was molding. Yes. Like it's funny well, how you know, all of those skills have sort of played out through your career in different ways. Yeah, but, it is interesting, especially at uni. You just don't know where you get. You're like, oh, I don't know. What, what do, you, what do I need to specialise? You know, and yeah, yeah. It, it's hard to sort of, yeah, it's, yeah, it's sort of find your it's, way of ways. Yeah. It's so good, yeah, and it's so good to speak to you again. It's been, you know, it feels like it's been, a, you know, too long, and it's good to catch Way up. Yeah, <laughs> uh, no, it's good. Yeah, it's so exciting. I was really excited when I heard you were doing podcasts. I was like, oh, so yeah, watching them, and yeah, it's good fun. It's really fun seeing people, you know, faces that you work with, and totally. yeah, well, it's been, hearing yeah. their journey as well, sort of. What's that, sorry? I was saying it's nice sort of hearing other people's journey as well and you know yeah because you you I, always catch people at different parts of their you know like you know maybe like 30 percent of what their career has entailed you know or even like yeah even, even if you only know you know know them quite well you might only know 70 percent but you, to, to hear it all told at, at one time i think is really nice and yeah, yeah i really yeah. enjoy doing them and um, yeah i just think yeah. it's, it's nice to celebrate um yeah, our, our friends who are also talented and had such interesting uh, careers and um, yeah, just yeah. So humble and lovely people. So yeah, thank yeah, you very that's... much, Kate. <laughs> no, it's good. I hope that weren't too. I don't know, all over the place. Yeah, probably it was hard work. No, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it's been good. Nice to see you. Cool. So. All right.